Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's off meta video, we'll be covering the new spark of instant fragment and how to go about creating a build that triggers its effects constantly. Now, the idea is kind of crazy as it requires you to constantly be in harm's way to trigger it, but with the right tools, this can benefit you like crazy. For example, using the feedback fences exotic along with knockout aspect will allow you to increase your melee damage by 10 volts while also applying extra damage to those who decide to strike you back and also grant you healing on the second melee kill. So with everything combined, you get a very volatile battery that is bound to detonate and go horribly wrong. So let's dive in. To start, you're going to want to have Touch of Thunder aspect, which allows users to enhance one out of the four grenades you have available. Then you want Knockout, where critically wounding a target will increase your melee damage and start regaining your health. The Knockout Fragment will be your friend here, as this here will keep you alive as long as possible while also dishing out higher melee damage. The lack of healing in the subclass makes doing close range fights a risk for a lot of users, as anything that can't be killed within one or two hits tend to lead to death. So for this, you will need to optimize your builds so you can do this safely and also have a backup mod available that can bring you back from critical health. For the fragments, Spark of Feedback, where taking damage briefly increases your melee damage by 75%, Spark of Resistance, where while surrounded, you are more resistant to incoming tanks by 40%, a Spark of Discharge, where Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create Iron Trace, and a Spark of Instincts, where being critically wounded emits a damaging Arc Energy that jolts targets. The most important fragments to have here is the Spark of Feedback, Resistance, and Instincts, as they will all play a major role within the close quarter setups we have in mind. These here will enhance your damage through simple means, while also keeping us alive as long as possible. Although this sounds counterproductive for the new fragment, from testing, the fragment isn't super strong and is more designed for stunning while doing a bit of damage. It gives you the breathing room you need to pull this off, which is definitely required if you want to use this more often. For the mods and stats section, we're going to invest in the resilience and discipline, as both of these are the only main things to invest in. Do not worry about your strength stat being low, as the charge melee effect can still activate even when the melee isn't fully charged. So for resilience, go for a tier 8 to 10 range as we need to have as much damage reduction as possible while fighting close range. At tier 10, you will get a 20% damage reduction along with the spark of resistance 40% damage reduction which should come to a 52% damage reduction if I work that out correctly. We then can add on an extra layer of damage reduction by applying an overshield to the mix, but this will depend on the weapons being used and if the extra requirement is actually needed. Your discipline can be tier 7 to 10 depending on if you have the right stats to achieve your goal. Your grenades with pulse grenades or even storm grenades will help a lot in terms of clearing out areas fast if things don't go the way you want it to but can also be used to trigger a spark of instincts for that quick jolt effect at the cost of losing your health of course. Now although I mentioned strength can stay low at around tier 5, you're still going to need the mod to support it for a long period of time. So, momentum transfer, midi kickstart and outreach are suitable for getting your midi back up fast in a given period. Remember, as long as we trigger the knockout aspect, it will always trigger the powered melee effect and thus also trigger the heavy handed mod for creating also power. After this, you're kind of left to your own devices since the main 3 stats are now covered and completed. So for armor charge mods, I would recommend you add on the charged up, arc weapon surge times 2 and time dilation mod. All 3 of these mods will help with retaining armor charge effects for longer but also grant you the 17% R weapon buff which can be helpful in the long run. And then lastly, Arc Siphon will be needed so that you can create Orbs of Power as well, along with the Recuperation mod for getting your health back up via the Orbs of Power pickup. Now lastly, the weapons being used should ideally have Stasis with Chill Clip to freeze targets, and also one Arc weapon that can trigger Spark of Discharge, if you want. I went with the Deliverance Fusion Rifle with Demo and Chill Clip, which is the perfect setup I had in mind. It's quick to use and flexible against a lot of targets, I can make dealing mini damage against majors and above a bit more safer with the ample time to free do what's needed. At the same time, it also comes with demo so we can utilize our grenades a lot more here, and since pulse grenades received a 20% buff this season, they have become even more fantastic to use against most bosses and enemies. 
After that, your choice of secondary weapon is down to you as no specific arc weapon is required here. For me, I had the path of least resistance trace rifle with shoot to loot and fault shot, which goes great for dealing high damage for long periods. As we will be moving around constantly, it's within your best interest to make sure you have a weapon that can keep up within the close range damage being applied, while also not being trapped while doing so. The Delicate Tomb Exotic from two seasons back is also a good weapon to have as it can spread its damage and works out really well when combined with a non-stop Iron Watch Trace build, which we do have the option to implement. Now, do remember you may have to swap out your primary to something else and also add on some special ammo finder mods for longer lasting effects in the long run. So overall, this is one of the most nuttiest builds to try if you like the whole me time build side of things, considering how chaotic things can get once you enter the fray. The constant mini damage buff and heals from doing so makes the build feel like a professional boxer versus a group of junior boxers. Basically, very unfair and questionable. Each time you get hit back, this will be reflected back to the enemies thanks to the feedback fences as well the trait, which can outright kill most red bar enemies you face. From here, your mini damage gets increased by an extra 75% thanks to the spark of feedback fragment, and then with knockout providing a 60% mini buff on top of that further, we then get a nuclear level of punches. Now add on some extra healing factors for the setup and you have a nice little 1 2 mini build that's great for low tier battleground level content. Now I say battleground level content because of the amount of enemies you face and how much damage these groups can do to a player if they are on their own. Now the build does offer us protection and ways to react when we do reach low health, but I do not recommend you use this setup in anything legend and above since the damage multiplier being applied to you will be too much. I have tested it out to see if I could make it work here and there, but generally I found that you get deleted way too fast for you to activate your effects and enjoy the fun. Even within the standard background, the build can fall apart fast if you face a group of shielded enemies, as this is where the build struggles the most against. Now against anything unarmored, and the build can do really well for survival, but anything outside of that, and the build does need to put in the work or else it falls apart. It's overall a nice practical build that shows off the effect of the new fragment well, while also leaning heavily into the exotic that not many people will want to use. As long as you're aware of the disadvantages it offers, then the build will serve you well where you want it. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build playdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. But at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub out here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you again soon.